Um, a number of years ago, when Sam Wanamaker was organising the building of, or rebuilding, if you like, of the Globe Theatre, um, which of course has existed for years now, but anyway, Sam Wanamaker was trying to raise funds for an interest in rebuilding of this, this great theatre. And uh, one of his perhaps less good ideas about where to raise money was to ask poets to write poems that had something to do with Shakespeare and then people would pay to come and hear them. And uh, I seem to remember that the year I accepted and uh, did my poem, the uh, audience was actually smaller than the number of poets on stage reading their work. However, um, I did enjoy writing this, which is a commissioned poem. I, uh, what Sam asked was, you know, write a poem, something to do with Shakespeare. Well, because I'd taught abroad, particularly in Japan and in Libya, but elsewhere too, in Pakistan sometimes and so on, um, I had ideas about the so-called universality of Shakespeare. I think it is true that, that Shakespeare is universal, that you can teach other writers abroad as much as you like, but nobody actually goes down as well as Shakespeare. On the other hand, there are difficulties. So the poem is really about the universality of Shakespeare, but it's slightly, shall we say, serio-comic. And the poem begins and ends with uh, quotations or misquotations from uh, examination papers that I've marked in foreign countries from in the Shakespeare papers. And the poem is called A Girdle Round the Earth. Of course, itself a Shakespearean reference. A Girdle Round the Earth. King Rear was foolish man his girls make crazy, says something certainly about the play. Brutus fall on sword for political reason is unambiguous, though not the way we native speakers might have put it, who share a language with the undoubted global poet. In Tokyo or Benghazi, he abides our questioning syllabus still, will never stay for an answer as the candidates all stare into the glossary cryptograms he hides. O Saku Sepia, Shaksbeer, O you who plagued the schools and universities from Patagonia to Pakistan, from Thailand to Taiwan, how would it please your universal spirit to look down and see the turbans and burnooses bent above your annotated texts, or see simplified tales from Lamb by slow degrees asphyxiate the yellow? And the brown. To pick up the quotation, thou art free. But Matthew Arnold, school's inspector, who saw you self-schooled, self-scanned, could not have known how distantly from Stratford and the Globe with British Council lecturers you've flown. Midsummer nights in Prague and Kathmandu, Polonius stabbed, dressed in a galabia, Shylock, the Palestinian refugee, and Hamlet's father's Serbo-Croat groan, Guntsinane transported to Peru, Kabuki for all's well, no for King Lear. To be or not to be, is that a question? The misquotations littering the page, the prose translations finger-marked with sweat, you prove again, worldwide, not of an age, but for all time, the English ala ad-din, the Western Chikamatsu, more than both and different from either. Somehow worth those sun-baked hours in echoing lecture halls, on torn tatami or dune-drifted stage. Lady Macbeth is horsewhiff full of sin. Prince Hell is drink-hard, though of noble birth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. My favourite is the to be or to be. Uh, no, do I not, is, is, that, that a well, is that a question? Well, that comes from an old schoolmaster of mine who said that when he went, that was actually, uh, what's the most famous theatre in Greece, you know, the... Um, Epidaurus. Epidaurus. He said that he was there years before and there were a group of Germans there and that some, well, some German stood in the middle and actually said, To be or not to be, is that a question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well.